and Elon Musk are polarizing our world and our society. I know that there is a huge and loyal Tesla fan base out there that can't wait to see the latest innovation that Tesla is driving, but at the same time, Tesla regularly earns a lot of criticism for some of their actions. In this video, I will talk about Tesla's history, their current market share, their product portfolio, and how they strategically build up a gigantic ecosystem. Electric cars, batteries, solar roofs, power walls, mega packs, superchargers, and more. How does this all come together and why are they so active in so many different fields? Based on facts, we will see that they follow a specific strategy to a solar electric future and that they transform several industries at a time. You will understand that Tesla is really proactive along the whole life of a battery and they are constantly growing and strengthening their ecosystem, which in my opinion gives them a huge advantage over their current competition. I will love to hear your opinions and thoughts as well, so leave your comments below and I'm happy to discuss. Welcome back everybody to Battery Insights by Electrified Veronica, episode number four. My name is Veronica Wright and I am a social entrepreneur and consultant for battery lifecycle management. I started my professional career in the automotive area around five years ago, and since then I am actively helping traditional vehicle makers to transition from internal combustion engines to battery electric vehicles, plus supporting emerging companies and startups in the EV world in their journey to our electric future. If you don't transition now, you're really gonna lose the race. It is fascinating how often in these projects and discussions the brand Tesla would pop up. Everybody wants to know what exactly is Tesla doing and how this is different from traditional vehicle makers. So first of all, is Tesla really dominant in the electric vehicle world right now? Yes, they are. According to the electric vehicle passenger sales numbers within the first quarter of 2021. So you can see that 25% of the worldwide sales between January and March 2021 actually went to Tesla, followed by Saic, Volkswagen Group, BYD and Stellantis. For those of you who don't know, I was born and raised in Austria and I'm currently living in the US. So this is why I want to break this picture down into my two countries. Austrians bought around 7,000 new battery electric vehicles in Q1 2021. 24% went to Tesla. North Americans bought around 99,000 new battery electric vehicles and 70% went to Tesla. So we can see that this picture of Tesla leading the EV race right now is confirmed. However, new entrants and traditional automakers are definitely catching up and Tesla will very likely lose market share in the future. Did you know that Tesla Motors was founded 18 years ago in 2003, not by Elon Musk, but by Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening? This was directly after General Motors actually stopped their first electric vehicle program. They actually thought that they were in an unpredictable niche of the automotive market and no one would actually really need these electric vehicles. They not only stopped the program, but they even crushed all of the vehicles. Go check out Who Killed the Electric Vehicle for a great documentary on that topic. It took them a long time, until now actually, to fully commit themselves to electric vehicles again. Thank you, Will Ferrell, for this great commercial. But back to Tesla. Elon Musk joined Tesla in 2004, first as a chairman of the board of directors, and finally he took over as a CEO in 2008. Now, the first product was announced in 2006. This was the Tesla Roadster. At that time, it was kind of a luxury and really expensive electric vehicle with 24 to 48 hours of charging time. Can you imagine? The first Tesla Roadster went to Elon Musk and is actually in space right now. Elon recently stated that the company always had a secret strategy. Build a sports car, use that money to build an affordable car, use that money to build an even more affordable car. 
So this was their vision. After struggling a bit financially, but getting a financial boost from Daimler and the US Department of Energy, Tesla eventually started to scale. In 2012, Tesla went into full production of the Tesla Model S that was already much cheaper than the Roadster. And in the following years, their electric car portfolio was complemented by the Model X, Model 3, and recently also the Model Y. As part of their scaling process, it was back in 2012 that Tesla started installing a supercharging network of six charging stations in California. This way, they could allow their customers to charge the vehicles for free. Installing this charging network, that was an important step and an unconventional approach for a vehicle maker, but really a key to make this transformation and EV adoption for Tesla owners work. Today, they own and operate a charging infrastructure with more than 25,000 supercharging stations worldwide. To further ramp up their battery and vehicle production, in 2016, Tesla built the first Gigafactory, Gigafactory number one in Nevada, US. Back then, this was the first of today's five Gigafactories around the world. One in New York, one in Shanghai, one is currently built in Berlin, and one more in Texas. Up until that point, other than doing the charging infrastructure themselves, everything would be more or less in line with a traditional automaker. But what they did after really set them apart. In 2015, Tesla expanded their product portfolio from electric vehicles and charging stations to battery energy storage systems. They developed the so-called Powerwall and PowerPack. Both products enable storing energy from renewables and allow people like homeowners to charge their electric vehicles from their own battery storage system at home. And now here it comes. In 2016, Tesla acquired a company called Solar City. Thereby, they added solar panels to their products. And they are somehow closing the loop by producing green electricity from the sun to store it in the power walls and charge the vehicles. This is an important step in the green footprint of the entire vehicle because it allows Tesla owners to access green energy almost anywhere. They even use solar to power parts of their gigafactories and supercharges. And I think this is really amazing. So during that time in 2016, they rebranded from Tesla Motors to Tesla Inc. They clearly positioned themselves not only as an electric vehicle maker, but also as a provider for solar power and stationary energy storage systems. Now, one of the key components of almost all of Tesla's products is obviously the battery. Tesla's battery pack consists of thousands of cylindrical cells, and Tesla uses these cells and integrates them and assembles battery packs from these guys in their Giga factories. Tesla currently does not manufacture battery cells themselves, but they are buying battery cells from Panasonic, LG, and CATL. As you can see, the strongest partnership is with Panasonic. Panasonic supplies Tesla with cells produced in Japan, but the majority is manufactured by Panasonic in the Gigafactory number one in Nevada. As you can see from this really beautiful, colorful plot, around 90% of Panasonic's battery cells went to Tesla in 2020 and only 10% of the sales went to other XEV manufacturers. We have a very different situation for CATL, who supplies only 10% of their sales to Tesla and has a much larger customer diversity. I think these plots are amazing. Thank you, Adams Intelligence. So Tesla has a pretty awesome battery supply chain right now, but they will actually start making their own cells soon. A challenge I see right now, and I hope they will tackle by producing their own cells, is the issue of shipping raw materials around the planet. For example, right now, part of the lithium needed to make the cells is um, sourced in Africa, post-processed in Asia, made into cathode material, and then shipped to Nevada. 
I would really hope that in the future they will address this supply chain issue by supplying raw materials locally to the gigafactories and minimize the transportation footprint. The only part of the battery biography that we have not touched yet is what happens with the battery once they reach the end of their first life. Very hot topic right now, basically for everyone involved in the lithium-ion battery world. So in 2019, Tesla announced its own recycling facility. And they stated that they will recycle 60% of their complete battery, reuse 10%, such as the external case and some of the electrical components, and the rest is not recycled. I could not find a lot of information about Tesla's efforts to reuse cells in other applications, such as taking the cells from the vehicles after end of life and reusing these cells in their energy storage systems. Right now, they seem to use fresh cells for both applications, electric transportation and energy storage systems, and directly recycle these cells once they are not used in their first life anymore. I'm really curious to see if this will change over time. Before I end, I would just like to briefly summarize the key point. Tesla is proactive along the whole battery biography. So we have seen that Tesla is more than a car company. Yes, they develop, manufacture, and sell battery electric vehicles. They manufacture battery packs and will soon produce battery cells themselves. They install a worldwide charging infrastructure. They produce stationary battery energy storage systems for storing renewable energies. They develop solar panels and roof tiles to generate clean electricity. And finally, they also start to recycle batteries to recover raw materials. One key point to emphasize is that they are really embracing a battery biography, where I assume that information is exchanged throughout the entire life of the battery. Moreover, they really used the mindset of a software-centered tech company and applied it to the automotive and energy sectors. Despite their success right now, I think they're definitely challenged right now by newcomers to the EV market, you know, like startups, but also traditional automakers who want to go fully electric right now. I still do believe that they have key aspects that will make it kind of difficult for others to catch them. But more about this in my next video. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for your interest, for watching and subscribing and talk to you soon. Bye.